Hey guys, what's going on? Rodolfo here. And Apple just announced something that I absolutely did not expect. So I thought I might come here and talk to you guys about it. Just go over the announcement and share a few tips on how maybe you could make the most out of it. So we've known for a while that WWDC this year was going to be online only because of the coronavirus pandemic, but Apple shared two new things today. First is the date. It's going to be on June 22nd, which is kind of interesting. WWDC is usually on the first week of June, and this year is going to be in the end of the month. It's going to be free for everybody because it's, you know, just videos online, which I understand for the sessions and everything like that. But they mentioned in the announcement that they're going to have labs. They did not share any details about it, but I'm very interested to know how that's going to work. Is it going to be FaceTime or something like that? And considering it's free, the demand's going to be huge. So I don't know how they are going to address that, but I'm very interested to find out. But the really unexpected news is that they are going to have something that's very similar to the scholarship challenge, but they're calling it the Swift Student Challenge. So what is this all about? Like, since we are not going to have an in-person WWDC, what's the scholarship prize going to be? Because it's usually a ticket and lodging and stuff like that. Well, this year, the students that win the challenge get an exclusive jacket and exclusive pins. Now, every year, Apple distributes jackets and pens to all the attendees but since there is not going to be an in-person event and the online event is free these are probably the only jackets and pens that are going to be given to anybody which is something pretty cool like the only people that are going to have a 2020 WWDC jackets are students that win this challenge and the jackets themselves are really nice the one from 2017 was a Levi denim jacket. Last year they've done something a little bit more colorful, different material. Same goes for the pins. The first ones I got were the regular closing mechanisms and last year they had these magnetic ones. As you can see I keep them in their original packages while I don't have a good way to display them. It's a really cool prize and besides that I think it's nice to know that as a student you won something that is a challenge that people all over the world are taking. So I really do encourage you to try it out. This was something completely off my radar. I did not think that they were going to do this this year. So I wasn't prepared. I don't know if I'm going to have time to submit a playground, but I really think that if you do have time to try out for it, you should. So how do you participate and how do you win? Well, the good news is that the requirements are pretty much the same as last year. So if you watch this video, video that I have in the cards here that I did last year. I go over requirement by requirement and I show you my playground and the tips are much more in-depth than what I'm going to give in this video. So definitely check it out. This is how I won last year. But the gist of the thing is you have to be 13 or older. You have to be a student, high school, college, STEM. You have to submit a playground that is at most 25 megabytes. The people judging it have to be able to interact with it in three minutes or less. It needs to work offline. You can't need internet for it to work. And to build your playground, you need to use the latest version of Swift Playgrounds for the iPad or the Mac, or the latest version of Xcode, which is 11.4.1 to build an Xcode playground. And if you build your playground in a way that can be run on iPad OS, so Swift Playgrounds, not Xcode, then you need to make sure that it's optimized for all the iPad Pro models and screen sizes. And last but not least, you need to make sure that all the content in your playground is in English. But the most important tip that I can give you is that the theme that you choose for your playground should be something that you are passionate about, that you like in general, that you like to read about, that you like to talk about, because you will need to write an essay explaining your playground and it's kind of 
of like a pitch. So you need to be able to talk about your project with passion, showing that you actually care about what that playground is all about. Why did you choose to do something about that particular subject? And it's very hard to sound enthusiastic about something that you don't really care about. So what does that mean? It means don't do a game. Don't make a game that you're just doing it because it's kind of easy and you've seen somewhere that it seems like games usually win or maybe do an AR project because everybody's doing AR and it's the new hot thing and you have to do AR. You don't have to do AR, you don't have to do a game, but you have to do something that you actually enjoy doing and that you can write about enthusiastically because I do think that they take the essays into account in the judging process. So aside from your playground, make sure that you write all the essays that they ask for. Really do spend some time and do them with care because they are important. They are as important as the technical aspects of your playground. So there is an essay about explaining your playground, as I said. There is one about how is it that you share your love of programming with other people. If you have an app in the App Store, they ask you to talk about your app App, and you should absolutely do that. Last year, my app, alongside apps from other scholars, got featured in the first page of the App Store. So don't skip any steps. Take care of the essays. Be careful with the documentation that you have to send to prove that you're a student. Really do read the requirements. I'm gonna leave the link for it in the description below. So be very careful, read everything, and make sure that you have all the documentation, all the things you need to deliver exactly as they ask for and you should be good to go. So that's it for this video. As I said, I've made a video about this last year, which is much more in depth in regards to all of the requirements. You can see my playground and everything like that. I'm gonna leave a card and link in the description below if you want to check that out. Let me know in the comments if you applied. Let me know if you win. Uh, show me your playground that you sent. And if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. It really does help the channel a lot. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.